Okay, <clears throat> it's three o'clock and it's time to start Simple Beam webinar. Hi, my name is Sakari Lehtinen. I'm the co-founder of DataCubist and still actually the other main developer of our product. And here today, talk to you all <clears throat> about under, under the topic, how to unlock the full potential of BIM data with Simple BIM 10. Or more specifically, uh, what's new in Simple BIM 10? And then that should also tell you what do we mean by the BIM, BIM data wrangling in, in general? And yeah, and how would you do it with Simple BIM 10? We'll, we'll go through some light demos, uh, some examples uh, using the new tools, uh, how to standardize, normalize, enrich uh, the new models so that they fit for the purpose. A um, few words about data cubes. So we are Finnish, uh, Finnish software company founded in 2009 already so it's been a long <laughs> journey already um, uh, we have an um, international user base and and uh, resellers in 14 countries already uh no <laughs> yeah oh 26 countries and 14 resellers if if you're um, listening from from outside uh, Finland, then then um, you might want to contact them. And few housekeeping things uh, as usual <clears throat> in a webinar, you can ask questions anytime just by typing them in into into the Q and A section. And uh, I have here tonight, uh, today, uh, my colleagues Jarmo Kuusinen and Mervi, who, who will answer to your questions while I'm talking. And maybe if we have time, we, in the end, we can uh, take some uh, live feedback on those. Uh, we will record this, and it will be available later for all of you who have registered to the webinar. This will take about 30 minutes or so. And uh, we try to keep it short. It's not about, it's it's not a tutorial. It's giving you some inspiration uh, about the Simple Wind then and its new possibilities. So uh, let's try right in, I suppose. Um, First thing I want to highlight is that we now have a new support website. And if you're wondering uh, what what does the what do we mean by beam data wrangling, there's actually some some uh, text article in here. And if you're wondering about all the new tools we I'm showing right now, in a minute. Then there's uh, some documentation about those here also. <clears throat> so, but let's get started. And I might not show any more slides. I just try jump right in into Simple Beam 10. And here it is. Looks a lot uh, like the previous versions but there are a lot of new possibilities, new tools available. Um, and the, the first one I want to talk about is the new quantity tools. We really went backwards and, and, and did a lot of work to sort of redesign the quantity tools. Um, because there, if you think about it, Quantities are the most important thing in construction. You could say that because you know they're used in everything. Uh, 
uh, starting from basic quantity takeoff, of course, which then is used for cost estimation, procurement, tendering, production planning, production scheduling, logistics, on site management, whether you're just monitoring or planning or or doing predictions, whatever. There's always quantities in in the uh, where you start to make those analysis and and um, and where you get those insights. So that's why we really focused on on this. And <clears throat> there were some limitations in in previous simple BIM calcul quantity calculation tool. And there's some restrictions and limitation in most of open BIM tools. So that was our starting point. And then we started thinking, how can, how can we make it more flexible and, and serve more of the actual use cases people have, the professionals have for, for the uh, measuring the quantities. So here I have a, set of objects sort of random just to highlight a few of the <clears throat> uh, the benefits of of the new new tools so let's just run one of them so in good and bad uh, we decided that there's no longer just one tool there are actually six quantity tools so there's tool for calculating what we call shadow quantities uh, basic surface area, space areas, volumes, all uh, opening uh, openings as, as a special thing and, and basic dimensions. But let's say, let's run the <clears throat> uh, shadow area tool first. And the way these new tools, not just the quantity tools actually, but all the other ones also work that you now have a possibility always to target them to a specific set of, of objects. You can target them by object class, or you could basically run this one to every object in the model, or you can target it in more specific way by first defining some groups like I have done here. I made this test group, which has part of the objects from the model assigned to it. <clears throat> and so, you define the target, you select your quantity, you select where you want that end result to be saved, and each of the specific kind of quantities have some additional settings. We will try to make it even more <clears throat> easier to use, um, but in most of the cases, these are the two options you need to do, and, and you can leave all the rest to the default and let's just run it and see what happens so so i i run it such that it will actually highlight the quantity it calculated in this case the area so that i can talk about <clears throat> what what are the limitations we have removed from the tools so first one is that uh, you can calculate these quantities, basically any quantity, to any object class. So <clears throat> there's no longer a sort of hard-coded list of quantities you can do. If you find some quantity useful for some object class, you can do it. And <clears throat> this, of course, also removes the restriction that many times the models they have, the wall might not be a wall. It might be a building element proxy of something totally different, <clears throat> a plate or slab even, and or, or the other way around. And, and still you would need sort of a wall quantity, then yes, you can calculate it <clears throat> and highlight it. Uh, you can calculate, of course, windows, and there's even some smart way of, 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 of calculating the actual area of the window and <clears throat> or door and not, not the sort of external parts of it. Uh, the other restriction we removed is that you <clears throat> uh, many times the 
especially the structural models, they have this what we call assemblies in the industry. Uh, <clears throat> so meaning that the object itself, this one, is actually created from multiple parts or, <clears throat> or children, whatever you want to call them. And then right now what I did, I actually calculated the area of the whole thing. So it's the shadow of the whole assembly, including all the parts that it includes. <clears throat> but you could also calculate the area for each part separately. So from any level of the assembly <coughs> or containment, you, you, can, you can calculate uh, the, the quantities. And here's another example. It's a Holocaust lab, but if you look at more closely, it's actually also an assembly and has quite complex geometry. And that's one thing we worked really hard on that um, you can now <coughs> calculate these quantities even for the complex or the right kind of quantity which is needed in the production or, or cost estimation or even complex um, shapes like like the holocaust labs or these labs or or even uh now i don't remember what it's called in english but uh, but even even complex shapes like like this and here you can also see that this is actually an assembly and with just with the new tool I was able to calculate the right area for that very complex geometry and an assembly and it doesn't matter what kind of optic class it actually is. And you know there, there are other, other things uh, we did. Uh, you can now calculate quantities for the curved objects also just need to know which one to use and there you go uh, there's the area of of the of that curved wall and so on <clears throat> so that's that's one thing um, uh, about the new tools, but let's highlight a few other things about them. So in our marketing <laughs> for Simple Living 10, we talk a lot about the derived objects and beam data wrangling. And so what 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 does that mean? And and one what, there's actually multiple ways to create these derived objects and I I hope you will understand why would you want to use them in a minute. But um, one one way to do create those objects, create new actual objects and data to the model is via these quantities. So let's say I have here these wood things. And let's say my use case would be the scheduling. So if I I get this model from structural engineer. I ask this bad footing uh, all the information um, I need for my scheduling. So, what what are you? How much are you? Uh, are there many other like you in the model? Where are you located? Which section? Or if we talk about the interior things, which apartment, which stacked area, which room are you located in? Uh, uh, how much it takes to build you, what's your material, and so on. And by default, you know, if you've done this beam for a while, you know that the objects from, from the structural engineer, they can give you only very generic answers and not answers to all, all those questions I just asked. So it would say, whatever I ask it, it would say, well, oh, take a look at my properties. Maybe you find it there, maybe you don't. And what comes to uh, like uh, locations in production, no, it's not there. Um, at the actual working hours or whatever, it's not there. So 
that's why we need to in data wrangling. We need to enrich the model so that it fits for the purpose. And let's see how I can do it for this one. So first thing I can do, uh, if I think about uh, uh, the full things, if I want to build them, I need the concrete pour, I need the formwork, probably some reinforcement and so on. So how about if I want the um, uh, the formwork there? So what I actually can actually do with the new tools, there's that derived object section there. I can actually create objects. But if I find the right quantity, like in this case, you know, these could very well represent the uh, formwork and they actually have the right areas and so on. But as such, you know, the, the tool created these new objects, in this case, covering objects to the model, they can be any, any kind. Um, as such, they don't actually have any data because they're, they're new objects. So they only have the quantity. I, I just calculated it. Uh, the quantity is also, oh, I've also calculated for the full things, but in this case also for the derived the objects. So how do I start enriching this? So uh, whenever these derived the objects are created, then uh, they are, uh, there's a link created to the original object. So I could use that sort of link or reference, whatever you want to call it, connection. <clears throat> and uh, not going into details, I created this template which enriches the data. It copies, it sets some data to the objects. And now if I look at them, there's more data in there. I might want to, because I'm using sort of standardized and normalized approach here, I, I might look at the properties that I created. And yes, now I know what's the area, I know where it's located, not just the building story, but I also, because the footings already knew which sections they belong to, now my formwork also knows that. Uh, but I don't have the working hours yet. So, <clears throat> so that would be the next step. And that's also the next new tool we have, uh, which, which could use could be used for doing that. So addition to all these new quantities tools, we also added uh, these calculate properties tools. Uh, there are two separate things. So uh, there's three of them, uh, one for each for, for a specific use case. You can calculate new derived properties for the objects, as you will see in a minute or you could even aggregate data to some kind of groups or containers uh, based on your calculations. So let's say I want to calculate uh, the, uh, the actual work hours needed for, for, for my formwork and for my concrete pour, then I could use a formula. Again, I need to target my operation, in this case, calculating based new, new values to the model based on formulas, a little bit like in Excel, but there's a specific format. Actually, the many of the Excel uh, formulas are working here. So, uh, but in this case, let's give you a quick demo. It means I want to uh, multiply my consumption, which I have already uh, set for my objects with the area I calculated already enriched to the model with the simple beams quantity tools. And then I want to set that value of that calculation to a new property, work hours, and the unit type is hours. And I say, okay. And now when I look at uh, my all work, they do have the work hours calculated for them. So there's a, some work for homework that is one 
square meter and because my multiplier for was 0.5 then of course it will take 0.5 hours for those homeworks to be built whether or not that's realistic I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm just saying that you can do that and with these tools um, you know uh, you, you could calculate uh, the same thing for different object classes and in this case if I'm calculating the concrete pour I would probably use volume as my basis for the calculations and say okay and so on but if you really go deep into this then you could even use <laughs> very complex uh, or more complex let's, let's not let's not say very complex but more complex um, uh, formulas as I said basically any excel formula or, or function will work here and in this case let's not go into details I've done sort of a conditional um, formula which I could then use to calculate the work hours for example for any object class in one go and that would be very nice yeah so now we have with my template I did some standardization normalization so that all my data is in this one property set what I need I used our new quantity tools to enrich the models and I used them for create these new derived objects and I used our calculate properties tool to derive new data based on the existing one to the model and now if I ask the full thing where what are you how much are you how many of you are there where are you located how long does it take uh, to build you it could answer all those questions and you could even start creating these um, ready-made views to your data like I've done here with our table palette which is was already existing in the simple pin 9 but here it is again and I've created this ready-made view to the model and it has all the data I have enriched and standardized and set uh, to the model and now I can start asking all sort of questions from the model okay how much it will take uh, to pour concrete and build the formwork for each section of my my uh, foundations uh, how many hours does it take if I take the task there I could see okay in section one there's that much that much uh, concrete pour oh no well, that, not that much but that much more work and that's how long it will take and and so on and and because the data is there you can ask any sort of question uh, what what profiles if you need to do some special things based on the profile or the type of the objects whatever and if you think, think this about in a bigger picture in the whole model axle building and you can do all these things to 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 every object then it starts to unlock the full potential uh, of the beam you get from the designers as as we promised yeah so and and uh, you could um, you could um, use the data inside simple beam and one one of the nice ways we add it here in simple beam then to visualize the data is this colorize with this you can now basically find anywhere uh, from from the from the uh, different palettes different tools so you can colorize the object class based on object classes based on uh, measure values when it creates this sort of gradient or based on text values when 
when it uses this kind of um, uh, ready-made palette or or visualizing things. The table palette has it, even the containment palette has it. So anywhere you go, you can visualize the data. Yeah, and all of this, all the derived object, all the derived data, all the visualizations can, of course, as I said, be used inside Simple BIM or exported back to IFC, even the objects, even new geometry, and or it, it could be exported to data table and like in a CSV format and then linked into your, say, Power BI project for analyzing the data uh, with, with tools which are great for that, that purpose. Um, and, you know, um, there's a lot of settings here because there's a lot of tools out there. Again, by default, you can use the default values, but uh, you sort of need to, you can, you don't need, you need to, but you can also, also it's a good thing that you can control how the data is, is exported uh, with sort of a configuration file. And you, then you just say where you want to do it. I've already done it, so I, I won't do it again. And then you would have that normalized enriched data uh, available to, to other tools in this format also or IFC, as I said. Yeah, so that's, and there's too little time. You can do similar things to space coverings, as you will find if you look into our, our documentation. You could do the similar thing to, to um, uh, multiple models. So, so if you would take HVA model and say architectural model, and you would want to know uh, where does these pipes cross or penetrate uh, the lightweight non-load bearing structures. Uh, again, it's a question which you don't have an answer in an architectural model. It doesn't know that. It doesn't know which pipes are or ducts are penetrating it. The ducts, the HVAC model doesn't know which walls they are penetrating, but if you put them all together and you would run a overlapping tool, objects tool, well, I can actually run it because we are already here. Then, oops, I think it created these proxies. Then, then again, you could create these new objects to the model, which node, which wall they are penetrating, which HVAC object was the one that penetrates the wall, and and create the data table. Use that for planning these on-site works, or monitoring them, or tendering them, or whatever. Right. And as a final sort of a, a fun, <laughs> but very useful highlight of, of Simple Beam 10 is the way that we started thinking about how you can simplify the geometry and the model. And here I have again ready made created groups for different things. So I have the furniture here and they have quite a complex geometry. So most of the IFC models file size or, or data load comes from, comes from these detailed geometries. And so do you always need them? Sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't. And if you don't, then there's ways to decrease the file size even like 90%. So that's why we created this Boxify tool. And there's few ways you can use it. 
uh, you can create these boxes as we will see in a minute or just one box for an object or even what we call convex hull. Um, I'll show you quickly. So, so if you run the tool and if I would go in and check my furniture now, You can see that it still looks like <laughs> the chair. It has all the data it had before, whether it's something you have standardized and enriched or something that came from the model of tool, but it's just 90% smaller if you export this to, X, uh, to IFC. So all this is exportable, of course, because we are talking about simple BIM here, and we're talking about BIM data running. So all that is exportable. And, you know, as a funny highlight, clicking through here quickly, my demo. Um, so you could, this is what a convex hull mean. It sort of takes the maximum surface area the object does. Uh, these were the trees, if you noticed. So now they're just funny. I don't know what you would call them. <laughs> Balls, whatever. And again, you could export this to Excel, uh, to IFC, and, and then it would be much, much smaller. Yeah, so that's a few of the highlights. Uh, remember our new support site. There's more information and examples what you can do with this all new, new tools and documentation there um, and lots of other information. And, um, and you know, that's this is what we mean by BIM data wrangling. You take the designers models, you standardize, you normalize, you clean up the data and you enrich it in a different ways even by adding new objects so that you can um, uh, create tasks tasks for all the things you need in production or even creating new properties or even manipulating the data in, in certain ways defining locations calculating quantities so and classifying the objects then that's what it means and then when you do that for all the all the models you get from all the different sources, then, then you get consistent data, fit for the purpose, and you can start automating things and scaling up your use of BIM. It opens us up, opens up new use cases, of course, especially in production, in facility management, uh, but it, it also scales up uh, more people has access to the data. You can create this ready-made views. You can easy, more easily manage your automation, your analysis, because the data is always the same. It takes a little bit of effort. We are on the path to make it more easier, more user-friendly, but um, it's also a special thing. So um, you can do it right now and even easier in the future. This is where we are with Simple BIM Pen. And as a side note, we are, when we talk about automation scalability, then we are developing Simple BIM Cloud, where all these things could be done even more automated and centralized way. Thank you for your interest. There's a uh, few. There's a few questions in the chat, which uh, I think we could have a look at before wrapping up this yep. one, if that's OK. Thanks, Sakari, for for the presentation. This, there's, uh, let's go take the, the latest question first. Uh, Egils is asking, can cover be created to duct and pipe classes, circular and rectangular uh, insulation quantity take off? Yeah, so. Any, any, if, if I understood correctly, any, any of those um, uh, area calculations can create those surface objects, uh, and then you can use them in the similar way as I, I showed there for the footings. But then it would just be ducts. 
yeah sure all right great thank you and then uh another question uh this was asked at, at the point when you were so showcasing the uh you know calculating the the data uh uh from the from the models there's a question that would you copy all of the calculated data to the ifc or would you keep it in your own data format for simple bin what's the impact on on the file size uh, of the IFC if adding that date? Yeah, OK, so as as basically everything we do with in, inside Simple BIM, it's all exportable back to IFC. So that's the whole thing. That's the whole idea that that you can enrich the data and then use it in the downstream. We are fully open BIM. <laughs> I would say more open BIM than uh, most of the applications. So that's the whole idea. So yes, you can. And actually, when I was creating the, the work hours there, it it creates such a property. This tool creates such a property that it, it can be exported back to IFC as any other property set property in IFC. Uh, the impact is, you know, depends on how, how much data you you create. Uh, uh, the as I said with the boxifier, most of the file size comes from the geometry. So I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't worry about enriching the the models by calculating new properties to it uh, from the point of view of of uh, increasing the file size. It's not the main main reason for that. So just try it. OK, thank you. And then one more question. Uh, I, uh, it was mm, around the discussion or examples on, on the assemblies. There was a question about, uh, I suppose, like use cases for bridge, tunnel, rail and so forward. Is that uh, sort of a description of, of different application areas that you can think about? Yeah, so. We've done some work with the bridge models. As as long as the model is created in such way that there are meaningful containers or assemblies in them, say the deck is maybe created from multiple parts, but they're all within one assembly, then then you could do the same thing. You could calculate the shadow area or any other area, surface area from from the whole thing, all the dimensions, all the volume, all, all those should work in that context also. It's that's one of the limitations we don't have because we are using the sort of generic geometry to calculate the quantity. So it doesn't really matter what the thing is representing as long as the quantity you're using is or calculating is usable for your use case. Good work. OK, I think that was the question. Then there were there were a few questions about the uh, delivering the recording later on. We'll, we'll uh, first of all send the send the link to the recording uh, to all the registered uh, uh, registered contacts. But then then again, uh, I think we might also share this in, in YouTube and make it make it available available for those who sort of received the link from a colleague or and and do not get the get the recording so uh but let's figure out some way to make this available for everybody interested yep great uh that that was all no new questions uh so i guess we can start wrapping up this one yep we went uh, went a bit over time sorry about that but great questions good to have them answered in the end yep great Thank you all for your time. Uh, please be in contact and, and try the new new version. It's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye.